Geest die stasie vir jou gesin, die een wat luister veel te bring. Luister en lach, geniet jou dag met Springbok Radio. En dis hallo van my Rita Buys hier by Springbok Radio Digitaal, waar die onthou inderdaad nooit ophou nie. And it brings us joy to welcome you to this brand new compilation of Springbok Radio material, as you remember it, but also one or two new programs. Always looking back though, on the era of Springbok Radio. Before we start, there's one important announcement. Springbok Radio Digital is using a brand new playout system, still with the old providers, but on a new platform. And you can find the link to that on www.springbokradio.co.za and just follow the listen online links. bring ons vir jou in die volgende twee weke. Firstly, you can tune in for the last episode of Mr. Scarface and Co. Hi there. And finally we come to the last chapter in the story of Al Capone in the era of the Prohibition. The Roaring Twenties. Well, I guess so. If you take into account the amount of lead that went flying, not to mention the jellic night. Even so, most Americans today think of the 20s as a time of excitement, adventure, life even. Regardless of the fact that at one time Chicago could count on at least a murder a day. But in 1931, all this was about to end. Well, maybe not right off, but certainly there was a glimmer at the end of the tunnel. Take, for instance, Al's latest attempt to try to stem the tide of justice. First off, he thought about murder. He even went to the trouble of importing five assassins from New York to do the job. But Wilson got wise to what Al had in mind and tipped off the police department. Listen, this is Rang Wilson. I want you to get a message to Police Chief Rush. Tell him I'm clearing out of my hotel. I'm on my way there now to pick up my wife and pack. If he wants to see me, he'd better get there damn quick. Uh, uh, just a minute. What's all this about? I just got word from Al Capone's got hired hands to get rid of me and my wife. Just told Pat Rush that, will you? He'll know what to do. Of course, you'll remember who Frank Wilson is. He was the guy Elmer Irie had brought over from Baltimore to look into the financial affairs of Al Capone. And let's face it, I was getting kind of itchy. I tell you, they somehow got hold of the books, Johnny. What books? Oh, the, the smoke shop, the ship. How the hell do I know what damn books he's got his paws on? And I guess that was more or less that. Looks like Al and Johnny are losing their touch, huh? Presenting Mr. Scarface and Co. The story of the American Prohibition Gang Wars, starring Bruce Miller as Al Capone, devised and produced by Kenneth Hendel. Hope you enjoyed this series. From next time, you can feast your ears on a brand new 930 dossier called The Queen's Messenger. And for your bi-weekly trip down memory lane, listen to see what you can remember of 1964 in Call Back the Past. As President and Commander-in-Chief, it is my duty to the American people to report that renewed hostile actions against United States ships on the high seas in the Gulf of Tonkin have today required me to order the military forces of the United States to take action in reply. 1964 brought trouble for the United States at home with race disturbances and in the Panama Canal Zone, where 23 people were killed in riots sparked by United States high school students raising the American flag in the area. But the main headache was Vietnam. President Johnson. 
Go Back the Past was restored and provided by Franz Erasmus. En soos gewoonlik is dit dan oor na Franz Erasmus. It's Springbok Top 20 time. 30 minutes of solid gold hits from the official charts of Springbok Radio. I'm your host, Frans Erasmus. In een hele weekse program is het aflevering 2 van het jaar 1970. Johannesburg, October the 17th, 6 p.m. Stuart Munro, a sales representative in his early 30s, is driving home and thinking of the cold beer waiting for him in the icebox. It's been a successful day, and he smiles to himself as he thinks of the lucrative sales contract he has just secured for his firm. The traffic is sparse now, enabling him to spot a hitchhiker on the side of the road. In Squatcast you can listen to the XXY Factor, produced by David Gooden and directed by Colin Fish in 1972. And in Taxi you can look forward to a whole lot of confusion again. Now you guys and broads has maybe been thinking that it's about time that me and Michael got hitched. I mean, after all, we has been walking out together for quite a long time. Sixteen years or something, I don't remember exactly. Well, one of the reasons is that I believe in a guy being sure before he gets married. Yeah, you know what they says, marry in haste and have a seizure or something like that. Anyways, I wants to be sure. And further, I wants to be sure I am sure. Now, not that my model ain't a great broad, she is. And I knows she will make a great wife one of these days. Nah, it's like when you go swimming, you know. Everybody dives in, then they realize the water is freezing. But they can't get out and tell you, gee, the water's freezing. Oh, no, no, no. They all waves and tries to get you into, you know. Come on, come on, the water's lovely. Oh, yeah. Well, anyways, what I wants to tell you guys I brought about this week is about me and Moitel getting hitched and about Red and getting hitched. This episode... Red's Getaway Cab was written by Joe Stewartson. En dan sluit ons weer aan by Big Daddy Lance James vir nog aflevering van Keep It Country. You can then experience Pat Saunders in a whole different role in The Last of Weekend Mirror on Springbok Radio of Old. Weekend Mirror This is Hugh Rouse Well done, Lop and Patricia Sanders. Greetings to you all on this Saturday morning, the last weekend mirror for 1985. And then for the Space Cadets... The Challenge of Space. Good evening. This is Charles B. Ryan, head of the Department of Space Research here at the New Mexico Center. A space mission is the most complex journey ever undertaken by man. Years of work go into preparing for such a journey in which perhaps only two human beings set out and arrive. But in spite of all the preparations, sometimes there are pressures to cancel a space shot at the very last moment, sometimes at the cost of valuable human life. Our story tonight is of one such mission, and it is called Mission Abort. This episode was written by Glenn Hamilton. And then we welcome Les Smith in our midst again with Comic Books and Bubblegum, number 14. Let's see what you can remember of the era of Springbok Radio. Off for some adventure then in... High Adventure! Tonight we present The Gun by Anthony Robbins. This episode was written by Anthony Robbins and produced by Henry Diffenthal. Lastly, we take another look at the broken link in society as seen in 1968. Since the dawn of time, a man has had crosses to bear, and through the ages the church has sought to help those with crosses to bear. It has been a helper and a unifying force, certainly at family level, but in this modern age there's been a drift away from the church, from things of the spirit, and this has certainly contributed to the broken link. 
And so we present the first of two chapters entitled Youth and the Church. Eens is altijd hoop ons dat jy hierdie twee weke saam met ons sal geniet. Ons sien ook uit aan hom van jou te hoor. You can do that in two ways, either on Facebook at Springbok Radio Revisited or on Twitter at Springbok Radio. And don't forget to visit the brand new website at www.springbokradio.co.za Till we speak again.